The Bunny Who Found Easter by Charlotte Soloto, illustrated by Helen Craig. One day, a little bunny woke up from a long nap, alone under a tall elm tree. He heard the silence of the woods around him and wanted other rabbits like himself for company. Can you tell me where I will find other rabbits? He asked a sleepy and old owl in the elm tree. Other rabbits, said the owl. Ma, why, there are always rabbits at Easter. Where is Easter? asked the little bunny eagerly. But the old owl had dozed off to sleep again in the bright sun. It must be some place to the east, thought the bunny, and he set off searching. It was a hot summer day. The leaves in the trees stood as still as a painting against the blue sky. The bunny found a pool of water and down in the water silvery trout flashed by. But there were no bunnies about. Then, then this can't be Easter, he thought, and went on his way. He came to a field full of daisies. There was a hot summer daisy smell over the field and the bunny's nose twinkled. A big slow bumblebee hummed by. But in all that whiteness of daisies, there was no whiteness of bunnies like himself. This is an Easter, the bunny said, and he went on. Once he was caught in a snowstorm, or a summer storm. The sky looked like night. Suddenly a streak of lightning, the color of the stars, forked through the sky. Great rumblings rolled from one end of the world to the other. The rain came down as fast as the bunny could hardly see the mountain, the mountain laurel just ahead. Slowly the rumbling rolled by, slowly the sky brightened, slowly the rain stopped. He could see the mountain laurel with the west shining leaves, each flower cup filled with one sparkling drop of rain. But he couldn't see any other bunnies shaking the rain off their wet white fur. Not Easter, he said sadly and hurried on his way. There he is, sad that he can't find Easter. Summer was nearly over. The leaves on the forest trees began to turn brown and gold and red. Dead leaves crackled under the soft rabbit, hop, soft rabbit hops of the little bunny who was looking for Easter. He stopped under a tree to rest and a round shiny red apple fell down and startled him. It smelled of autumn and crispness. He took a bite with his two front sharp teeth. When he had crunched the apple to its, to its seeds, he looked around and sighed. There wasn't another bunny to be seen. One day it began to snow. Soft white flakes drifted down from the sky and the air was sharp and cold and still. When he hopped through the white drifts, he left little dark footprints in the snow. But no matter which way he hopped, his footprints never crossed other bunny footprints. The little bunny was alone in a world without rabbits. There were birds, little black sparrows, like ink drops in the snow. Brown squirrels leaped about in the bare branches of the trees. Once he saw a hole a whole family of deer slipping into the forest at dawn. But there wasn't another long-eared, pink-nosed, white furry rabbit like himself to be seen. This can't be Easter yet, he thought, and his loneliness grew inside of him. That night, the bunny curled up in a hollow tree to keep himself warm out of the wind and sharp air. When he woke up the next morning, there was something different. It smelled. He quivered his nose and smelled hard. It smelled of greenness and warm, soft sunlight. The little bunny felt sure he would come to Easter soon. In the forest, the black twigs had little tight curled green buds. The birds were singing high up in the trees as the bunny hopped ahead looking for Easter. He's back looking for Easter. Suddenly, he saw something in the muddy earth that made him stand perfectly still with excitement. Crossing in front of him and going into the woods where he had never been 
were little rabbit paw prints on the ground. He followed the paw prints very carefully down a hidden path. There, in a clearing, he saw someone small and furry resting on a mossy bank. So there's the little black paw prints in the mud. It was another bunny. She had a brown fur. She had long ears like himself and eager bright eyes like himself. The little bunny was so happy to find her, he completely forgot about Easter. So there's the bunny that he found. Hopping back through the forest with her, he showed her all of the places he had seen on his search. So he started and he went this way, and he went down this way, all the way to where he saw her. At last, they came to the tall elm tree where he had first awakened to find himself alone. But now his loneliness was gone. The two bunnies were very happy together. Soon they had a whole family of little rabbits, tiny, soft, sleepy things with long, sweet ears and small, wet noses. The bunny's heart throbbed with happiness at this wonderful, earth-smelling, sunlit, bunny-filled world. Aha, said the old owl when he saw the bunny's family. Didn't I tell you so? At Easter time, there are always rabbits. There they are, and there's their babies there. The bunny felt his little bunnies around him and the earth blooming beyond them and all things growing. And he understood at last that Easter was not a place after all, but a time when everything lovely begins once again. So there's lots of the things that he saw on his travels, the deer and the birds, and there's the little baby bunnies. So we are gonna make our own little bunny, and he's searching inside here for Easter. So if you have a look, I have like a little container, and I've built the little end of a, a bunny, and he's looking inside the container. So we can start with a little container. So you use whatever container you have at home. You can use a jar, you can use a cup, you can use a recycled like pudding container, like whatever you have to do that. These are just two containers that we happen to have here. And I'm gonna put a piece of styrofoam in there. And the styrofoam is just to poke my flowers into. So if you don't have the styrofoam, it really doesn't matter. Um, you can always just tape or glue your flowers onto the edge and it's not gonna change how your bunny fits in there. So if you have a piece of foam and you wanna poke some flowers in there, you can do that. So that's the start. And then I have like a little white puff ball. So we just have a container of all different little balls, puff balls. If you don't have one, you can use a cotton ball that you have, might have at home, a piece of cotton, um, or even like a cotton pad that you might have for makeup and you can just pull it apart and fluff it up so you can make that into a little puff ball. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on that and I'm gonna, stick that in my container. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue around the edge and I'm just going to tuck that right on the edge. So it depends how much you want him sticking out. So you can see that my other one's a little smaller. And then I have another puff ball that has some little silver wisps in it and I'm going to use that as his tail. So again, if you don't have exactly the same material as us, that doesn't matter. Just look around your house and try to find material that you can be creative with. So there's his tail. And then I'm going to go ahead and make the flowers next. So how I made the flowers is I had some little pieces of wire. And you don't have to use wire, but you can if you have it. You can also use um, pipe cleaners or you could use popsicle sticks. So whatever you have to stick your flowers on after we've made them. So I'm just shaping these pieces of wire so that I can poke them down into the styrofoam. And that's what I'm going to use for that. You can also just glue your pipe cleaner along the edge and put your flowers on there. So then the next step 
to make the flowers, I used um, tulips. And I <clears throat> just taking some craft foam. So I have craft foam and I have some felt. So whatever colors and shape or colors you have that you want to use for your project. So I'm going to use some pink and purple. And to make a tulip shape, it's just the typical rounded flower shape at the bottom. So we'll round that out. And then it's a little bit more square at the top. And then you're just going to cut in some little triangle sections to make it look like the top of the tulip. So just really simple. And when you take that apart, got your tulip shapes. So I'm gonna do the same with my felt. I'm just gonna round it off at the bottom. So we've got that. And then I'm gonna do the same at the top. So I'm just gonna cut it a little bit shorter and then you have to have pretty sharp scissors to cut the felt. So I'm going to go in and cut the little triangle tips at the top of my flower. And then you take them apart, you have the tops of your flowers. So if you're using a pipe cleaner, I'm probably going to want that maybe a little bit shorter, I think. I've just folded one in half, so I'm just going to cut the tops of my pipe cleaner off. And I'm going to glue my pieces of felt on there. So I'm just going to flip those over, put some glue onto the back of my felt. And I'm going to do the same on my yellow tulip. And then I'm going to stick that on there. So if you have lots of time, you're going to stick it on there and you're going to leave it and you're going to let it dry for a few minutes so that it's nice and um, secure on there. But since we're just doing our video, I'm just going to also stick a little piece of tape on there just so we can move along. So tape is just to help it until the glue finishes drying. So that's what it would look like. And then you can add that to the back of your can. So on my can, I'm going to also add some other ones, but I'm going to use this one and I'm going to tape it in. You can also glue it in. I'm going to tape my flowers in, and then you can point them in the directions you want. And then I'm going to add some more flowers. So I'm going to use my wire and I'm going to attach my flowers. So if you're using wire, you can do two things. You can poke your wire through your uh, foam to get it attached, or you can also glue it. So you can do the same thing we did last time, which is a spot of glue and a piece of tape, and then attach the wire on there. And so I don't know if the tape itself is kind of like a temporary hold because the tape doesn't necessarily um, tight enough to keep the glue in there. But if you do a little bit of both, I think it's going to hold if you want to keep this as a decoration for some time. So now I'm just going to take my wire and I'm going to poke it down into my foam and I'm going to attach that. So this is where you need to let your flowers sit for a few minutes so they can attach. So you poke that down into your foam and then you adjust your flowers the same way that you did with your pipe cleaner. And then the last part of this that I have is to fill the container up so that you can't see your foam and you can't see your flower stems. So I'm just using some green puff balls that we had in our little craft supplies. Again, you could use some moss or you could use some of that fluffy green shredded stuff that you get at Easter. And so once you're all done, you've got your flowers in the back, you've got it filled with greenery, and it looks like he's looking down in the bucket. Maybe he's looking for another Easter bunny.